You see, that type of doubt is what I'm talking about there in John 10.10. That steal, kill, and destroy, ladies and gentlemen. When he makes you doubt yourself, doubt within yourself, he brings you to the lowest level he can bring you to where God can't use you no more. And see, I believe there's a lot of people today in that same state of depression, but they may not realize that they're in that depression. But there was a change within themselves. Most of the time, the loved ones around them see that change in themselves. See, as loved ones, we're supposed to stand up for that. Give them back what they once lost, which is happiness and joy. Matthew 6, 25 through 27. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? It says, don't worry about the life, your life, what you eat or drink. So don't worry about your life, is what God's saying. Don't even worry about your actual physical life. If you die, don't worry about it. He said, don't worry about f- food or, you know, or water. He says, for the birds in the air, don't worry about it. But yet they sing every day. I got birds that sing in my window every day at 7 o'clock in the morning. They wake me up most mornings. And they are just as happy. But yet they have no idea what they're going to eat that day. Nor where they'll get any drink, especially when the next time it'll rain. They don't know these things. But yet God provides for them. He provides for the lowest creations that he has made. You don't think he'll provide for you. And sometimes we forget those things. The thing is, in the world, when we lose a job, in the world, when we lose a game, or when we have a, a, a whole week of things where it just seems that we can't get ahead on anything. And see, God will always provide and at the end right here, I believe this is the most precious thing, I, you know, or the most important thing. It says, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Isn't that so true, ladies and gentlemen? Have you ever made anything better by worrying about it? Or keeping yourself up at night? Or making yourself just about sick? Has it ever made anything better, ever? And this, we're supposed to give this to God. And this type of suffering that we suffer when it comes from sin and stuff. This is the type of suffering we give to God. See, we can't overcome it ourselves. The Bible says, it doesn't mention anything I mentioned today. It says overcome. It says endure. That's what we can do. We can endure. That's all we can do. We can endure during the storm, during the flood, during the fire, during the persecution, during the pain. We can endure all these things, but we can never overcome them. Only through God can we overcome these things. That's important to know. Don't trust on your own understanding to overcome them, but trust upon what God shows and God gives you. (coughs) We'll go to the next slide. All right. (laughs) I can't, I don't think you can see it too well. I don't know. But right here, if you ever uh, watched the movie Christmas Carol, it just came out with a new one with uh, Jim Carrey. If you ever remember the scene, if not, Christmas Carol is about. Christmas story where this old humbug Scrooge comes and um, he's get visited by these ghosts. But anyhow, this fellow Marley comes. And Marley has these chains upon him. And the Scrooge asks him, he's like, what are these chains for? And he says, I made these chains link, like, link by link, bound by bound. I forged these in the life that I lived. And see, that speaks to me in a different type of way. For Marley, in this sense, which is goofy, unfortunately, that he had to ch- carry these chains the rest of his life in eternity. But I believe these chains aren't limited to you in eternity. I believe these chains are weighed upon you here in this life. I believe here, when we suffer through sin, insecurities, depression, all these things are like chains and bounds to you that you just drag through this life. And you don't get stronger from these chains. No, you get tired. You get wore down. You get sad. These things do nothing but tear you down. Not only do they tear you down, but they tear down the people around you. They affect everything you go through. 
Michaela told me they had a dog one time that they would put a cylinder block and they would chain him to it, and that's what kind of would slow him down. But she said he would carry that thing, run around with that thing, just dragging it. He would cut, put, old, put big cuts in the ground out in their yard. And I believe that's what we look like, dragging these things around. Except for cutting the dirt, we cut the people we love the most. We cut those that we come encounter. For when you don't sleep, you don't eat, and you worry some, you say things you don't want to say. You do things you normally wouldn't do. You become something that you aren't. And before you know it, the light of God no longer shines within you. It's a dark, wretched place that you lost your own self. You're doubting what you are. You're doubting what you ever grew up to be. You're doubting what you need to be. And see, those kind of chains, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be unshackled by you and me. But they can be built by you and me. Galatians 5.1 for, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For who here knows that either you or someone is a slavery to sin, slavery to the world itself? And this slavery does nothing but cause you deep suffering and sorrow and grit and doubt to the point where you just feel that you are bound by these things that you can't break free. It says here that Christ has set us free. For whatever doubt, insecurity, Whatever thing bounds you from being who you truly want to be or truly know you should be or whoever you're praying for, or if it's a family loved one or something that's keeping you up at night, something of the sort. It couldn't even be about you. It could be about someone else. As parents, I believe you stay up late at night thinking about those things. I don't have kids, so I don't understand these things. But it says, for freedom had it set us free. It says, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. See, we submit to slavery, ladies and gentlemen. We submit to these things in life. We make these choices ourselves, just like we submit to God. It's a choice right there. It's the two roads diverge in the yellow wood. <laughs> Except for in this case, it's life and death. Not life and death of the physical, but eternal soul. It's a life of suffering for glory of God, or the suffering that will never end. It's a suffering for good, or the suffering for meaningless. It's doing for the good and helping the suffering or turning you back to those who are needed the most. That's the two paths we come upon today. So I ask you today, if you have these chains that bound you, the chains that hold you back, that keep you from being who you truly should be, the chains that weigh upon you and made you tired, I know I've worn these chains, and they make you tired, ladies and gentlemen. They make you very tired. And that's the only way I could put it. So I pray to you, God, undo these chains. Come unshackled. Let us be free. And let us be the light of the world that God needs us to be. Not be shackled by sin, not by insecurities, not by our own doubt. But let us be glory and let glory through us come from God and be for God. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I have for you today. We didn't get a chance to introduce Brooks, but he's one of our own, and we love him so much and appreciate him, and thank you so much for being here. Ask our pastor, if you will, to come down and stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation, Nearer My God. Let's all stand. y'all to lead. I've lost my voice here, but let's sing the second verse, and uh, look what it says. You know, Brother Brooks taught us about going through life, and it tells us in this verse, it says, though like the wanderer, the sun is going down. Now, folks, I don't know, there's a lot in that verse. 
We wander through life, but there's going to come a sundown. And it also tells us, let's not have darkness over me. Let's be near to God so we will see what he is in eternity. Let's sing that second verse. Though, though like the wanderer. Though like the wanderer, the sun goes down, darkness be over me, my rest a stone. Yet in my dreams I'd be nearer my God to be nearer my God to be to be. I want to thank you so much for being here as Brother Brooks and uh, Brother Justin to go to the front of our church and greet you as you leave. Uh, don't hug Brother Justin too tight. He's got shingles, so uh, he may be a little uncomfortable. But again, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to ask Brother Earl Stone if he'll dismiss us with prayer. <laughs>